the praises go loud. His glory comes down. Higher, higher, higher. When the praises go loud, His glory comes down. Let's go. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Come on. Come on. Put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. Thank you so much, praise and worship team. Such a wonderful time in the presence of God. Such a wonderful time in the presence of God. Glory to Jesus in the highest. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus in the highest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you happy? Are you happy? Are you blessed? Are you happy? Are you blessed? Are you happy? Are you blessed? Put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus once again and give him some praise and glory. Give him some praise and glory. Give him some praise and glory. Give him some praise and honor. It's worthy of all glory. It's worthy of all praise. Father, we worship you. Just lift up your hands and honor the Lord. Father, we exhort you today. We give you praise and glory today. We say, blessed be the holy name. Just lift up your hands just wave your hands in the air and bless the Lord. Give him all the praise. 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 It's worthy of all glory. Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. Somebody praise him and honor him. Just honor him. Just honor him. It's worthy of all glory. It's worthy of all glory. He's worthy of all glory. He's worthy of all glory. It's worthy of all glory. It's worthy of all glory. Father, we worship you. We give you praise and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said amen. And the church said amen. Thank you. And the church said amen. Take it down. Hallelujah. We are coming to the end of the month. And this month we've been speaking on resilience. Are you blessed by that message of resilience? Have you learned a lot? Have you learned something new? Have you learned something new? Hallelujah. Are you blessed? Are you happy? Are you happy? All right. Most will come. Our online family, we are coming to you live from Nairobi, Kenya. Kenya is in East Africa. I don't know that my sound is good. And we are Eagles Dominion House International here in the heart of Nairobi. In Sunbeam Shopping Complex, 50th floor. It's opposite Equity Bank on NAT headquarters and along Mfangano Street. I want to speak on the great power of resilience and we're doing part three of the great power of resilience. Part three of the great power of resilience. And you can open your Bibles in the book of First Kings chapter 18. First Kings chapter 18. Glory to Jesus. This is the place to be. Online family, this is the place to be. The praise in this place is crazy. The dancing is crazy in this place. Hallelujah. We carry our dancing shoes. When we come into the house of the Lord. To dance to Jesus. 
Hallelujah. First Kings chapter 18 and verse 19. As you open, let me underscore the following. That God gives his children strength and power. As you open First Kings chapter 18 and verse 19, it's important to note that God gives his children strength and power to keep them moving. We agree, we all agree, that doing God's work is not easy. It's not easy. Devoting yourself, giving yourself for God's assignments, is not a walk in the park. It's not chocolate and butter. Praise the Lord. But God will always give you strength and power to keep you moving. Everyone that God used before, he gave them resilience and the strength to move on. Everyone that God used before. Are you there now in first? I was saying that to give you time to open first Kings chapter 18 and verse 19. Are you there? Are you there? If you're there, say amen. If not yet, say hallelujah. Should we wait for hallelujahs to become amen? Father, 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 you are here, I worship you. Verse 19, First Kings 18 verse 19, the Bible says, now therefore, send and gather all Israel to me on Mount Carmel, the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah. Look at that. This is Elijah versus 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asherah, totaling to 850. One man against 850. So Ahab sent for all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together on Mount Carmel. Israel gathers on Mount Carmel at the command of King Ahab. And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people answered him not a word. They never, why do you think they never answered a word? They were not sure. They are also wondering, who is this guy speaking to us? You have caused us drought for three and a half years. Then you are coming to tell us here. Hallelujah. Yeah. Some didn't know him. Some didn't know Elijah. In any case, he appeared once to the king, spoke a word and left. To the hiding place where God was hiding him. So people didn't know him. Elijah the Tishbite. Hallelujah. Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Therefore, let them give us two bulls and let them choose one bull for themselves. Cut it in pieces and lay it on the wood, but put no fire under it. And I will prepare the other bull and lay it on the wood, but put no fire under it. Verse 24. Then you call on the name of your gods. What, what's that? Then you call on the name of your gods. And I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God who answers by fire he is God. It's a challenge that Elijah puts across. He says, The God who answers by fire, let that God be worshipped. So this was the situation. For three and a half years, no rain, no dew in Israel. Why? Because when Jezebel was married to Israel by King Ahab, he introduced Baal worship. And Jezebel destroys all the altars of God, just kills the prophets of God. But you know there were 7,000 that God was hiding and Elijah is not aware. Even when Elijah is talking to Ahab, he says, I am the only one that is left. Please avoid that statement. At all cost. 
Always avoid that statement. That I am the only one. Never let that statement never come out of your mouth. It's a statement of pride. But let's focus on the main thing for today. Jezebel comes in and lowers the flag of God and raises the flag of Baal. And people begin to worship Baal in Israel. And when they began to worship Baal in Israel, God is not happy. And Elijah rises. God uses him. Goes to the king and says, there will be no rain. There will be no deal for three and a half years. And that's what happened. There was no rain. There was no deal in Israel for three and a half years. But after three and a half years, God shows up to Elijah and tells him, go and show yourself to Ahab. And Elijah shows up. And Ahab tells him, you are the trouble of Israel. You are our trouble. And Elijah tells him, I am not the trouble. You are the trouble. You are the trouble himself. That key is off. That key is off. I'm not feeling you. Pick another one. Pick me in the spirit first. Don't just, mm -hmm, thank you. Now watch this. These prophets in the Bible, it was not, an e it was not easy for them but the strong faith that God had put in them, that God had placed in them, that was the power that kept them moving. It ignited the fire of resilience in them. Look at this man, Elijah. He doesn't have a congregation. Then we gather here, encourage ourselves in the Lord. He was alone. He didn't have a church or ministry somewhere where there are people gathered and they are watching or listening to him. The guy is alone. God is speaking to him. Go and announce this. Go and say this. It was not easy for these guys. It was not easy for these prophets. As it is not easy for us today, it is also not easy for us. Hallelujah. Is it easy for you? Maybe it's easy for you. Is it easy for you? Huh? So Elijah tells Ahab, I have a challenge for you. Gather Israel here in Carmel, Mount Carmel. And let the 850 prophets, both of Baal and Asherah, be here. We'll give them a bull. Let them make an altar. Put the sacrifice there. Don't put fire on it. And ask for fire from above. And the God who answers by fire is the one we are going to worship. He turns to Israel and tells them, For how long shall you falter between two opinions? If God is God, we worship. If Baal is, is God, let's worship Baal. And they kept quiet. No one answered anything. Meaning, no one was on the, was on the side of Elijah. Elijah was alone. It's not easy. There was no single person to encourage him to say amen. You are not here. Elijah says, for how long shall you falter between two opinions? If God is God, let's worship God. If Baal is God, let's worship Baal. They kept quiet. So it, it is very clear that he is on his own. It's very clear that Elijah... Elijah, you are on your own in this thing. If God does not answer by fire, hey, we shall skin your life. You know, speaking to people who don't know you, people who don't trust you, it's not easy. Elijah was on this mountain, and the prophets of Baal and Asherah are there also. To sacrifice so they are gods they are gods Elijah was just there picture that man he was just there alone crowds are gathered on Mount Carmel and the guy is alone no one is telling brother we are together no one is telling brother keep on the fire 
In any case, it looks like the crowds were on the side of Prophet Sobal. So, okay. Put yourself in the, in, the, in, the, in the shoes of Elijah. What would you have done? What would you have done? All eyes are on you. All cameras on you. If God does not answer by fire, what will you tell people? Think about it. For a minute, think about it. Ah, you think it's easy? Oh. Have you not seen preachers stand and say, Father, we stop rains and rains increased? Have you not seen? You think it's easy? Have you not gone to meetings where the preacher says, the cripple is going to walk? The Lord showed me and the cripple does not walk. And when the cripple does not walk, we make, we make excuse. Are you? Are you here? Have you not been meetings where the preacher will say it is going to rain and as you wait for rains, nothing, nothing manifests. Okay, let me talk to you. Have you not prayed for somebody and you felt healing was flowing and they told you the pain is still there? <laughs> huh? Let's, let me come to you. Have you prayed with somebody and the problem never shifted an inch? I'm talking to you. Think about Elijah. You, you are just praying for headache and malaria. Headache and malaria. El Elijah, we are talking about physical fire coming from above. Hey. And the guy is alone. No fellowship of brethren. Where they are saying, Kakakara barara, man of God as you go. God is together with you. And we are no one. The guy is alone. If you have to encourage yourself, it's upon you. Are you here? Hey. Are you in this place? Huh? Have you ever prayed, Father, I know today is going to be the best day. And you prayed and, and spoke in tongues for more than 30 minutes. And you came out of the prayer you know, prayer room more energized and feeling encouraged and then you went for business and the whole day you sold nothing. Has it happened to you? <laughs> ah, yeah. Elijah is alone on that mountain. And the prophets of Baal, we are not talking about Israel. They are 450. The prophets of Asherah are 400. That makes it 850 prophets, false prophets against one prophet. Now, not talking about Israel, that the king had commanded everyone to gather in Mount Carmel. Israel was gathered in Mount Carmel and they are looking at Elijah and some are not happy with him because some know that he is the one that stopped rains for three and a half years. So the faces, are you here? Look at me. Their faces, the look. Hey. The look that they are giving him is not a good one. No. Ahab is like, okay, I've been looking for it for three and a half years. Wait a minute, we shall be done. If fire does not come down, you will know I'm Ahab. And the guy is alone. He was just there. But there was something in him. He was so sure and he knew that when I call on God, my father will bring down fire. That's why he tells them, the God who answers by fire is the God we are going to worship. Aye. It's not a nice challenge. Oh. What if he doesn't show up? Are you here? Mm. Huh? Have you not seen prophets that say, if so and so does not become president, God has not spoken. And then that person doesn't become president. And then you will, there will be an excuse. There is always an excuse. I saw, I saw in the realms of the spirit. I saw so and so becoming governor, so and so becoming senator. Then they don't become. 
Have we not seen it? Eh? In all our general elections in Africa, prophets are always everywhere. This one says this one. This one says this one. This one prophesies. Says, God showed me. I am so sure. I have never been sure like now. And then the time comes. And the elections are conducted. And the prophet is nowhere to be. <laughs> the prophet is nowhere to amend and repent publicly. Because what you spoke, you spoke publicly. You announced before cameras. You made sure it goes viral. And then doesn't come to pass. Huh? <laughs> Even we had one preacher down here who made one politician an apostle. I say, eh, eh, let's wait and see on the ballot box. <laughs> Are you here? This thing is not easy. It's not a walk in the park. Elijah is alone. But something in him is so sure that when I call on God, fire will come down. And he gave these guys a first chance. He told them, okay, do your thing. Call on your gods. The God who answers by fire, we are good to go. And they began their thing. They began their thing. They began to dance. They even cut themselves. Blood was oozing out. But nothing happened. That strong faith that Elijah had, it is God who had blessed it in, in him. That strong faith. I, can I talk to you? That strong faith that mark you, Elijah has not brought down fire before. Are you here? He has never done such kind of a powerful service before. Number two, he has never stood before such a big congregation before. It was his first time. People are in their thousands and they are gathered. And the guy is not freaking. That faith, that strong faith is God who blessed it in him. That he was so sure that fire is going to come down today. Even though he had never seen it happen before. Nor had, was there history of any other preacher doing that. He was the first one to bring that thing. It was a new doctrine in town. And everybody's like, okay, this guy, <laughs> you're going to bring fire from heaven. Let's wait and see. And I'm sure some guys were sipping some drinks and saying, hey, this one, it can't work. Brother Elijah, just give it up. Just give up. It can't work. But there was a strong faith in this man that moved him. And he never feared. If there's a faith you, you move with, that fear cannot find a place in you. That no iota of doubt can find a place in you. Strong faith. And by the end of this service, Somebody, you're going to have so much faith in God. Oh, come on, come on. You're going to have so much faith in God. Mm, that amen is not convincing. You're going to have so much strong faith in God. But you start to speak things and they come to pass. That you will give, are you here? Directions and heaven will hear you. Strong faith in God. The happenings around could have made him give up. I have already painted a picture for you to see there were happenings that would have made Elijah give up. But resilience was ignited in him. No matter what happened, he did not lose focus. No matter what people said, no matter their faces, he never lost focus. This is what happens. When resilience is ignited in you, when the spirit of resilience is ignited in you, you can never lose focus. Show me a man who has lost focus. I will show you one that has no resilience in him. With resilience, there is focus. I said, with resilience, if you're writing, with resilience, there is focus. Or where, where resilience is present, Focus will be evident. 
Hallelujah. There were many things to distract him. But he held on to God. Until fire came down. He held on to God. Elijah held on to God. And God proved himself. To the children of Israel. So watch this. God does not just prove himself to his people. Something must, must pull him down. Even your faith. That strong faith. That strong conviction that God will show up. Is what I'm talking about. Elijah had a strong faith in God. Now you know what? This fire must come down. This fire must come down. It was not easy for Elijah. We can agree together that it was not easy for Elijah. It's always not easy. But you need this power of resilience in you. It's always not easy. Even God agrees. It's always, even Jesus at some point, he said, Daddy, this couple, hi, take it away from me. It's always not easy. But what, what does God do? He gives you the power of resilience. Your prayer should be one. Father, give me the power of resilience. Give me the power of resilience. Many gave up on the way. Many could not manage the heat in ministry. The heat in doing God's assignments. Many could not manage. They gave up. They took off. They stopped believing. The power that God gives you, it ignites resilience in you. The power that you receive from above, it ignites resilience in you. May this power ignite resilience in you. May this great power lift up your right hand. Your right hand high. Let the power of God ignite resilience in you. Let the power of God ignite resilience in you. Let resilience be ignited in you. In Jesus name. Thank you. Put your hand down. Now this power that God gives ignites the fire of resilience. Resilience carries fire. And when this power comes upon you, there is a fire of resilience that is ignited in you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is here. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is here to help somebody. The Lord is in this place to help somebody. There are those that have hope. Very strong hope in God. And this hope ignites resilience. For example, Abraham, Bible says, he hoped in God against all hope. Abraham never considered the deadness of the womb of his, his wife. He never considered the deadness of his body. He was at 99. The wife at 8, 9, clocking to 90. He hoped in God against all hope. This strong hope in God ignites resilience. There are some that have very strong patience. You can be patient. This patience ignites resilience in you. There are some that have very strong faith. Like Elijah. He believes that fire will come from wherever it will come from. And God will answer by fire. Ah! And this strong faith ignites resilience in them. Which category do you fall in? Hallelujah. 
Are you the kind that gives up and looks back and turns back? Are you that kind? This work of God is not for the faint hearted. Sometimes results don't come out the way you expected. Sometimes things don't happen the way you prayed and expected. Discouragement is a demon eh? that is very crafty when doing God's assignments. You have to be very careful of discouragement. Yeah. You don't make sales the whole day. And the devil begins to preach to you the spirit of discouragement. So where is your God? Ah, though you prayed. I thought you gave your tithe. <laughs> the way you gave a strong seed, what happened? And you will feel discouraged at once. It creeps in unawares. By the time you realize, oh, you're feeling discouraged. You're feeling discouraged. You're feeling discouraged. You pray, you pray, you pray. After the prayer, a strong headache. A sickness hits you, an infirmity. And then you are like, God, so, which one are you? What are, what are you doing, whatever you are doing in heaven when I'm going through this discouragement? Eh? Somebody promises you eh? some good money. When you do that business, when you, eh? and then they call you the last minute. Say, sorry. Uh, you will call a brother and say, I'm so down, no, pray for me. <laughs> no, you are not down, you are discouraged. <laughs> Being down, I'm so down. That's, that's a worldly language. The, the, true thing, the true word is you are discouraged. You are not down, you are discouraged. Some have a strong hope in God. And that strong hope ignites resilience in them. May the hope of God in you ignite resilience. May the strong faith of God in you ignite resilience. Hello? May the strong patience in you ignite resilience. That there will be no place for discouragement. Happenings will not affect you. What you see around. Huh? Like now, there are rains. No pastor wants rains on Sunday morning. No pastor wants rains on Sunday morning. Because when it rains on Sunday morning, <laughs> ah, glory to Jesus. People will sleep. People, people always look, they are looking, always looking for a reason not to come to church. Ah, are you here? When it rains, say, ah, we have a good reason. When pastor calls, say, it rained and there were floods everywhere. We could not come out of the household. But on Monday, they came out of the house and went to work. <laughs> uh, are you here? Are you here? Oh, are you here? Tomorrow is Monday. Someone didn't go to church today because it rained the entire night. And man of God, there were floods. Tomorrow is Monday. Somebody will eh, make sure that they have to be in the office early in the morning. So people are always looking for a reason. Not to go to church. So no pastor wants rains in Sunday morning. You can easily be discouraged. You can ask, so God, you don't want people to come to church. Oh. So you don't want us to worship you. Uh -huh. You have decided to bring rains on Sunday morning. Are you not God? You can rain on Monday. Are you here? You can bring rains on Monday or Tuesday. Why Sunday morning? Why Saturday night? It rains, it rains. And there are floods everywhere. Those things, they can easily discourage a man. You, know, you think I'm joking? Aye. You think I'm joking, Abi? There are many men of God right now. They are so much discouraged. Even though they are on the pulpit preaching, but they are, they are not fulfilled. 
they were expecting many people in church today and many people didn't come. And so discouragement is in them. Even though they are preaching, they are on the altar preaching. If you, some of them, if you cross them right now, they, will, they can easily cast you. You realize they, <laughs> there is discouragement. <laughs> ah, yeah. eh? Don't dare call pastor after service if you didn't come to church. Hey. If you, if you know that the pastor is hot tempered, don't, don't make a call. Oh. Call on Tuesday. <laughs> Let him cool down. Let him. <laughs> the first thing will be where were you on Sunday? You didn't come to church. Uh -huh. When that question comes, you know something is in the heart. Where were you? The first thing, not how are you, where were you? Oh, you think pastors are strong men? They don't feel discouraged. They ah, we feel sometimes we are we are down, we are discouraged. I pray that the spirit of resilience be ignited in you, that no happening will bring you down, that no happening will discourage you, that no happening will take you from the presence of God, that no happening will dictate your moods. Huh? moods oh. that patience that faith ignites resilience when resilience is ignited in you you receive focus to go on with God's assignment did you hear what I said when resilience is ignited in you you receive focus be standing. Let's stand up. I had prepared a lot, but because of time, be standing in the presence of God. When resilience is ignited in you, you receive focus to go on with God's assignment. Somebody, what you need is just focus. And there can never be focus if resilience is not ignited in you. If resilience is not ignited in you. If resilience is not ignited in you. There can never be focus on God's assignments. Bow your head before God. And open your mouth and tell him. Father, today. Let resilience. The Lord is doing something special today. Pay attention. Open your mouth. And tell the Lord. Father. Let resilience be ignited in me. Let resilience be ignited in me. Let resilience be ignited in you. Open your mouth and pray. Give me some sound here. Open your mouth and pray. Let resilience be ignited. No movements. Stay where you are. The Lord is doing something for you. The Lord is doing something special for you. You can never receive focus if resilience is not ignited in you. If resilience is not ignited in you, there will never be focus. You will never focus. You will never focus. Let resilience. Let resilience be ignited in you. I say, let resilience be ignited in you. Let resilience be ignited in you. Let resilience be ignited in you today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let resilience be ignited in you. In the name of Jesus. Let resilience be ignited in you. Resilience. 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 The Lord is answering that prayer right now. I said God is answering that prayer right now. 
He is igniting resilience in you. He is igniting resilience in you. God is igniting resilience in you. Resilience is being ignited in you in the mighty name of Jesus. Resilience is being ignited in you in the name of Jesus. Let resilience. Let resilience be ignited in you. Let resilience be ignited in you. Let resilience, let resilience be ignited in you. I say let resilience be ignited in you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let resilience be ignited in you. is what the Lord says the month of May you will see the fruits of increase I say you will see the fruits of increase you will eat the fruits of increase there will be manifestation of the fruits of increase who is receiving what I'm saying right now the fruits of increase will manifest in your life in the name of Jesus I declare the fruits of increase listen the four months of 2024 January February March and this month of April God has been making a way for him to manifest himself in your life in this work in the month of May and the highway has been uh, God has made a highway I said God has made a highway for increase for increase 
for increase. God has prepared the way for increase. Wait for increase. I say wait for the fruits of the increase. He's a may of difference. I say it's a may of difference. This month of May is a May with difference. Ah, you will walk on heaps of increase. You will see increase in your life like never before. You will see increase in your business. I declare you will see the fruits of increase. God has been preparing the way. In the four months, it's been preparing the way for increase to manifest in your life, to manifest in this work. Watch what God is about to do. Hey, ah, ah, what God had prepared for you. I said, What God had prepared for you, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart has conceived it. What God is about to do in the month of May, I declare May, 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 May. Come on. May will answer to increase. I say May, the month of May will answer to increase. May will answer to increase. May, May. the Lord is telling me that right now things don't look like it but God is going to break forth I said God is going to break forth God will be like a dam that broke forth suddenly there will be floods of increase in your life floods of increase in this work floods of increase in your finances floods of increase in your business floods of increase there are answers you've been waiting for from God the way God answered by fire on Mount Carmel God is answering by fire in this May I said God is answering by fire wait for manifestation of increase listen the moment God answered by fire on Mount Carmel there was increase in the kingdom the children of Israel believed in God they bowed down before God and they went back I see the nation of Kenya going back to God I, I see Kenya going back to the true worship, to the true worship, to the true worship. Men who begin to worship God in truth and in spirit, in truth and in spirit, in truth, in spirit, in truth, in spirit. Watch this. Watch this. God has begun. God has begun. An expedition of exposing fake prophets. Are you here? In this nation, God has begun something special. There is a move in the spirit where fake and false prophets will be exposed beyond doubt, beyond doubt, beyond doubt. And men will know, men will know which is which. Listen. For a long time, for a long time, people have faulted between two opinions in the nation. Today, you are in God. Tomorrow, are you here? On Mount Carmel, on Mount Carmel, the first prophets, they are doomed was revealed. God is revealing the doom 
of fake and false prophets in the land in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hey you know what I saw you know what I saw you know come here let me demonstrate come 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 you are what you are what dear give me a cloth Quickly give me a cloth. Quickly. I saw. This is how he has been in Kenya. You could not know them. The first prophets. They are so covered. They are so covered. You cannot notice them. They are preaching in the Bible. They are doing many crafty things. And nobody could notice them. But this is what I saw. And what I saw is what God is going to do. I saw God do this. I saw God open them up. I saw God expose them. I saw God expose them. I saw God exposing the first prophets in the land. In the name of Jesus. I declare that time has come for first prophets to be exposed. To be exposed, be exposed, let the veil be removed. I see revival. 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 Breaking forth. I see revival. I announce. Revival, I announce on this altar, revival, I announce revival. A revival broke out on Mount Carmel. God is a God of locations and God chose Mount Carmel. God chose Mount Carmel where revival would break out in the days of Elijah. I saw revival breaking out. I saw revival breaking out. I saw revival break out. I saw revival break out. I saw revival break out. I see revival breaking out. Come on. People will not falter between two opinions anymore. We shall know the true God. And we will worship the true God. We shall know the true God. I will worship the true God in the name of Jesus. And listen, one thing, one more thing. One more thing. It is not only Elijah. The seven thousand, the seven thousand prophets, God is exposing them. God will manifest himself through them. There are sons and daughters. There are men of God. There are prophets. There are apostles. There are men and women. There are remnants that are rising from the caves that are rising. The time has come. The time has come. I say the time has come. I say the time has come. The time has come. The gods of Ashera, the gods of Baal, their time is up, 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 in the name of Jesus, their time is up. was prophetic I will not say much but that's why a Kenyan had to be in it may God help you may God help you understand I see revival I see revival I see revival! I see revival! I see revival! 
I see revival. Come on. of God. The fire of prayer. Somebody will just be walking and all of a sudden and people will begin to I see the fire of God on the streets. I see the fire of God on our streets. On our roads. Smoke gatherings. No gatherings will explode in fire. Any time, any moment. Any time, any moment, anything can happen. Be expectant, be expectant, be expectant. Ah! Ah! I saw this. I saw this. I saw this. When the president is about to leave State House, eh? what we see first is his convoy prepared. Are you here? We see the chase cars. They are just out there. And the drivers are ready. And the motorbikes that, are you here? That was I saw in heaven. Heaven is ready. Because the king of glory is about to manifest. The king of glory is about to manifest. Heaven is ready. Heaven is ready. Heaven is ready. Listen, and the Lord tells me, the Lord tells me, the first prophets in the land, they've been busy, busy up and down, trying to do meetings to confuse the agenda of God. Up and down, up and down, so busy, so busy, so busy, so busy, even when there are rains, so busy. You know what? They're afraid. But God says, his time has come and no man can change it and no man can change it and no man can change it no demon can change it no devil can change it i declare the time has come open ye gates open ye gates open ye gates open prophets they are trying to confuse the church but God has said no God has said no you will be a lot I say you will be a lot God says you'll be a lot you will be a lot Woo. father we say thank you receive the praise receive the glory somebody worship him receive the glory Receive the honor. Receive the glory. Receive the praise. Receive the praise. Receive the praise. Receive the praise, Jesus. Receive the praise, Adonai. Master, receive all the praise. Receive all the glory and honor. Receive all the praise and honor. We worship you. We worship you. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Dio, we give you praise. Come on, we give you praise. 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 
we give you praise we give you praise come on worship the lord bless the name of jesus bless the name of jesus bless the name of jesus come on bless the name of jesus bless the name of jesus bless the name of the lord bless the name of jesus bless the